something. I didn't know what I should say to him after sharing that. Luckily, he's just grinned with his, un with his usual mischievous little smile and said softly, We should clean ourselves before our roommates are back, don't you think, little bird? I nodded, feeling suddenly ashamed and dirty, and moved away at once, looking for something to clean my belly and hands. I heard Damien standing up as well and chuckling at my back, and then there were two arms around my waist and a gush of form breathed, breathe against my nape, I shuddered. That wasn't too bad for a first time, hmm? I stepped away from his embrace and ran away from our bedroom, heading for the bathroom in the ground floor and leaving behind all my classmates in the corridor. I was glad he didn't follow me and I got to be alone for a short while. Looking at my reflection on the mirror, all the shame for what I had done jumped over my shoulders, unexpected and unwelcome. Why had I done that with Damien? I didn't feel anything for him, that's not how it should be. I always imagine myself in the future married to a nice, pretty girl and of course doing that sort of things. Then why was it that doing with Damien had felt so good? I wondered if it would feel as good with a girl. Damien already had a girlfriend. Did it feel better with her than with me? It should, isn't it? But it had been really hot. Just the thought of Damien's thick dick in my hands made me underwear feel too th tight again. I splashed my face with cold water. I needed to refresh to cool down both my body and my mind. I wondered about a million small things that wouldn't get any answers just by standing there in the middle of an empty, too, empty loo. I rushed upstairs again and lingered in the corridor outside my door unti until I finally saw Monty and Rick coming my way. Alex, are you okay? I nodded. I didn't want to be asked about what Damien had done or said, so I started talking instead. I'm going to go to the servants area now. Really? Right now? I want to go with you. But Damien said he couldn't pass us together. I'll be back soon and I will tell you everything I found out. All right? He sighed. It's not all right. I don't trust Damien that much. What if he leaves you there and you don't know how to come back to the dorms? Have some fate, would you? Damien appeared at the at the three's hold, glaring at Monty with annoyance. Let's go already then, before we grow old and die for boredom in this damned school. He grabbed my forearm not very carefully and started walking with long strides, pulling me with him. Hey, Damien, we want Alex back in one piece, you hear me? Damien waved goodbye without stopping or turning, and I did my best not to trip over my injury ankle and keep his pace. I retrieved my arm from his grip. I felt uneasy in Damien's company and couldn't look at him in the face. After turning the corridor twice, the string of students started to be more scared until we found ourselves in a completely empty and silent corridor. If we were still in the same wing as I thought, we had left the bedrooms behind us. Looking around to check if there was someone inside, Damien opened a plain door that led to a narrow staircase and we trotted downstairs in the semi-darkness. The stairs died in a small hall with three simple locking doors. Damien pushed the front one without any hesitance hesit hesit and followed at his heels. We found ourselves inside the kitchen of the school. It was huge, split in different small rooms with a huge fireplace in the central one and a long table in front of it where some servants were sitting, doing sewing tasks or just chatting in front of a cup of tea. Hey, you, what are you doing here? I jumped at hearing a boarding man addressing us in a clear bad mood. There's no card game this evening, is there? Nobody has told me so. If there's one, I want in. I need to reco recover what I lost yesterday. Relax, Max. I'm just showing around my friend here. The man Barry glanced at me and instead shone a threatening fist in front of Damien's face. Are we the fucking London Bridge? To be shown around? If the head teachers find out you enter here whenever you want, he will yell at us, you know? As in a magic trick, there was suddenly a one pound note in Damien's finger and he pushed it inside of the man's apron pocket before I know anyone else saw. He placed his index on his lips as if asking silence and winkled to Max. 
Then he turned to the other people in the kitchen, grabbing my elbow. Max, leave the kid alone. Come here, Damien, and introduce. Uh, come here, Damien, and introduce your new friend to us. Damien smiled politely, very different from his usual mischievous smirk. Mrs. Hutchinson, this is Alex. He started his this term in St. Michael's. The woman, obviously the main cook, nodded fondly at Damien, offering me just a short look over. She was a plump woman in her fifties, and her brown eyes shone warmly. Good to meet you, young man. I hope you are enjoying your meals here. Are you a senior student as well? I hesitated. I didn't feel as a senior at all, but it was in my last year before university, so I nodded with a shy smile. She ignored me and turned to watch Damien closer. You had a huge growth spurt this summer, Damien. You looked like a proper young gentleman already. No wonder that good-for-nothing Lisa fell for you. The corner of my lips twitched at those words and I glanced at Damien with the corner of my eyes. He just shrugged and kept smiling at the cook with a warm smile. Your boys grow so fast. Where's the cute skinny brat who used to slip into my kitchen to see my cherry pies? Damien chuckled at that and opened his arms. He's right there. Do you have any? The woman chuckled and turned to look for something in a shelf hidden by a third curtain. You know, I always save on one cherry pie for you. Here you are. But we'll share it with your friends, okay? My roommate took the delicious looking pie with evidently Mrs. Hutchinson's Mrs. Hutchinson, you're the best. Please marry me. We could run away together and get married by that old viker in town before dawn. It would be so romantic, don't you think? That made the woman lean over with lauder. She ended up hitting Damien on his arm with a disc close before my roommate could touch her. The whole scene made me want to ask a bunch of personal questions to my roommate. This wasn't the guy I knew it at all. Stop teasing her, Damien. The one who had spoken was one of the girls sitting at the table in front of the arms of the hearth. She was perhaps 25 and smiled at Damien with, the, with what I recognized from my own experience as an elder sister look. Hi Connie, can I ask you something? He sat on a stool in front of the girl and lowered his voice. We were looking for one of the new employees, a guy our age, pockmarked, sandy hair. Ah, that's Mark. I have barely talked with him, to be honest, but it seems he has been sick lately. Ask the girl over here, over there, Sarah. She arrived to the school with him, and I think they talk to each other. Uh, they talk to each other more often. She gazed at, gazed to a surface girl at the other end of the long table, and we thanked her and approached Sarah. I was surprised to notice her brown hair was short, cut just below her ears, and her makeup couldn't hide it completely. It was strange. Why would a young woman cut her hair as short as a boy's? I looked around, and all the other girls in the kitchen wore their hair braid or in a bun over their white caps. The girl's bitter expression didn't vanish when she noticed our presence in front of her, rather than the opposite. Damien offered her a charming smile and a nod. Sarah, right? I don't think we have met before. The girl remained silent. You know, I'm slightly worried about a guy who attended the table the first week. I talked with him just a bit and I wanted to invite him to one of our poker matches. But he suddenly stopped appearing at the dining hall and now I hear she's been sick. That is an ex excellent excuse, I thought. I would have never come up with something like that. The girl stared at Damien with a stern face and didn't say a word. Could you, you know, tell us about his condition? Is he going to be okay? Yeah, I think so. I have gone to see him though, so what do you, do I know anyway? And it's bad to the fire. I jumped back, surprised. Uh, alright then. I hope he gets well very soon. He grabbed my arm and made me turn and he towards the door we had entered through. He waved goodbye in general and offered me a piece of the cherry pile while we climbed back to the service stairs. Ah, thank you. It's delicious. I spied his face in the gloom and saw he was throwing all polite smiles vanished. I'm sorry if this has been useless. I will talk to that guy when he gets well and comes back to work. It hasn't been useless. 
What do you mean? Uh, that girl, Sarah. She was lying to us. What? Oi, Damien, you can't know that. Look, little bird, I have been playing poker for some years now, and I can tell when someone has something to hide, and that Sarah is hiding a lot, I can spur. Confused, I finished my piece of pie and decided I had already had enough for the day. The next day went by as usually, in which I now consider the pattern of my days at St. Michael's. Getting up, having a bath, church, breakfast, lessons, lunch, more lessons, then studying in the library or the study room, dinner, and, if I had overslept in the morning, going for the bathroom. That Tuesday, when we finished in the classroom, Monty came closer, all smiles as always. Hi, I have news. Our summer has broken his thumb. I have been allowed to join the cricket team for the rest of the year. Ah, oh, congratulations. That's great. What are you doing this afternoon? Do you want to come and cheer for me in first training? Ugh. Um. Ich denke mal, wenn wir go to the study room with, uh, uh, go to the study room to meet Rick machen, wäre das wieder eher in Richtung um, Ende mit Rick. Wobei, um, ich überlege gerade. Hm. Weil eigentlich müssen wir lernen. Und Ja, eigentlich müssen wir lernen. Ich weiß gar nicht, was ich das letzte Mal genommen habe. Ich glaube, ich bin mit ihm zum Cricket Training gegangen. Ich weiß gar nicht, ob ich das letzte Mal ausgewählt habe. Äh. Hm. Ich würde sagen, go to the study room to meet Rick. Before I could open my mouth to answer Monty, Damien came out of out of the door of our classroom and strode to our side. We should follow with our investigation of last night. Come on! He grabbed my forearm and started walking again, dragging me with him. He didn't even let me give an explana any explanation to Monty and my poor maid stood in the middle of the corridor, watching us to go with his mouth agape. I turned as fast as I could and waved goodbye to him and then I struggled with Damien to let go of my arm. He did so, without slowing his fast pace, and smirked at seeing my furious face. I don't like that habit of yours dragging me anyway away if it's, if I was some kind of potato sack. He just chuckled at my words. All right, little bird, then just follow me and try not to get lost. And stop calling me that. Damien ignored my words, of course, whatever. He kept walking and going down and up flights of stairs until I started to feel disoriented. I still carried my books and notebooks from that day's lesson, but Damien ignored me when I tried to tell him we should go to she I tried to tell him we should go to our bedroom to leave them. I couldn't deny he was helping me a lot, but even thought it was infuriating how rude he could be. In the end, he pushed up barely noticeable door, and I realized we were in the same corridor as the previous day, the one that led to the kitchen and the servants' area. We started to climb down the same stairs at the previous evening. I guess the stairs were barely used, because the two, the two times it ha I had been there, we found them empty. I suppose there were more service stairs like that one in other parts of the school. So, do you want to talk to Sarah again? Stop for a while and sit down here. Where? Here on the stairs? Yes. I wondered what for, but I sat down by his side. Perhaps he need to talk about something important before going to the kitchen. But as soon as the two of us were in a sitting position, he moved closer and hooked an arm around my waist, and then his lips were suddenly on mine. Ouch! Damien! Stop it! He smirked at my words, then I had to push him away with some strength. Damien sighed, clearly annoyed. Look, I'm sorry if I gave you the wrong impression yesterday, but it was just the heat of the moment, I guess. I don't want to do that again, what what you did together. The heat of the moment, hmm? He grinned again, as if I had said something ridiculous. I nodded, trying to show him my most serious and determined face. 
You're cute when you blush like that. And she leaned, leaned in again. I had to make a barricade with my arms to avoid being kissed. I mean it. It was just a one-time thing, okay? Damien's grin fell and it didn't like at all the frown that grazed his forehead right then. Damien looked scary when he was angry and that have always been awful fighting. I like hell it was. He leaned back, resting his weight on his forearm on top of the upper steps, and a tiny smirk appeared again on his, on his face. How will your parents react when they get called at school and informed that their little bird has been caught committing gross in intensity? In density? What? Gross in in death Gross in density. That's what it's called in the law, you know. You can you can be spe sent to prison for doing what we did. No way. What are you saying right now? And what about you? He just chuckled and affronted words. My father's already used to covering up for me. He would just send another donation to the school and they would turn a blind eye. The head teacher and he will have a brandy and toast for me and will blame those rebellious years of youth. But your parents? Think about it, and think hard, little bird. It will be most upsetting for them, won't it? Their youngest child, child, such a disappointment. Even the head teacher doesn't turn you into, into the police. Of course, you would be expelled from St. Michael's. Goodbye to your bright future. He was whispering to my ear by then. I pushed him away again, annoyed. Why would you do that? I thought you would, were willing to help me, and now this... He shrugged and looked away. I think I told you before. Life here is so dull. Every day exactly the same routine. And next year, Oxford will still stop will still more rules and tiresome daily tasks. I have the right to have some fun when I see if it, haven't I? And you have turned out to be a nice source of fun. But you already have a girlfriend. Damien chuckled and moved closer to me again. This time I hesitated. If he if he was thinking serious about turning me into the head teacher, what should I do? <laughs> Rachel's just a girl. Forget about her and come here. Fisting my hands, I turned my head to avoid his lips, but he started kissing my cheek all the same. Then his limbs found my earlobe and began to nibble it. My resolution started to crumble. Damien laughed against my neck and his hot breath made my skin tingle. I know you like this quite a lot. Stop acting like the child and sit on my lap. Come on. I kind of didn't want to, but I ended up doing as he told me. I sat on his lap and placed my arms around his neck, and when he kissed me deeply, this time I didn't resist at all. His arms around my torso felt so good, almost as good as his tongue caressing every nook of my mouth. I felt myself drooling or mixed salvia dripping down my chin, and I didn't care. I aligned my head to fit to fit better his mouth, to savor his tongue with mine. He started to unbutton my shirt. I shuddered. Wasn't that too risky? We were on stairs after all, not in a private place. Stop. Someone could come. They are all getting ready for dinner at this time. Nobody will come. He only undid three buttons enough to pass his hand and touch my skin under the fabric. I couldn't help but mourning again and hide my embarrassed face in the crock of his neck, making him chuckle. You're so sensitive, I bet you're already hard. And he lowered his hand until he touched my crotch. I'm ashamed to admit that yes, it was hard. He let his hand wander along my fully erected shaft, humming quietly as if he was very pleased with it. That little bird really enjoys being touched, who would have guessed? Stop. Stop calling me that. Nothing against my jaw, he nestled it in the quick chop of my trousers button. He took my heart member out of my underwear and started caressing it like the previous evening, circling it with two fingers at first and then grabbing it firmly with his whole hand. As I was sitting on his lap, I couldn't touch his so I could better enjoy the incredible feeling of his hand pumping me hard. His nuzzling on my neck turned into a into full pitting when the rhythm started to go faster and I had to bite my fist to avoid crying out in pleasure. My release came fast, prompted by the place we were in, a transit place after all. We both had in mind that we should do it quickly without lingering too much. 
I was still panting, trying to regain my breath when the door on the upper floor opened. Damien pushed me on his side out of his lab and hurried to wipe his hands sticky with my cum inside of his school jacket. Oi, what are you doing here? You are right in the way. Uh, I was just trying to convince my mate to show our next game. I tried to tuck my limp member in my trousers and button my shirt as, as coverly as I could. Damn it. I was sure my face was red and I looked really suspicious. Are we talking about poker? Does your friend here have some spare money to bet? Uh, of course, or we wouldn't be talking. The man reached our step and grinned at us, barely paying me any attention, fortunately. Ah, good, good. See you next Sunday. And you, youngster, remember to bring a nicely bulky wallet. And with that, he kept going downstairs until he reached the landing and opened the door on the right, waving goodbye. I couldn't help but said loudly, that was close. We better start going. If Max was here, I can think of some other people who could use the stairs. They might get too curious about us. And he stood up and brushed his trousers with his hands. I got to my feet too, feeling oddly disappointed. Are we going to look for another place? Nah, sorry. My mood is gone. I met you another day for that. I didn't know how to react. He hadn't come, so it felt a bit unfair. After a long hesitation, I found something to say at last. And what about Sarah? Didn't you want to question her further? He offered me a wide smile. Didn't I tell you? I spoke to her this morning after breakfast. He started going upstairs and I followed him, of course, shocked by his words. Really? So you didn't need to bring me here at all? Damien laughed heartily, throwing his head backwards in a quite seductive way. Embarrassed, I looked away and asked him, And what did she say? Did you, uh, did you find out anything? Well, yes. It seems Mark left the school this morning at the first light of dawn, never to return. I frowned, puzzled. This morning? Yet last night he was still lying in bed with illness. Curious, isn't it? And he opened the door to the corridor, humming as if he didn't have a worry in the world. How I invite him. Ich würde jetzt hier eine kleine Pause machen, da schon langsam meine Stimme ähm, nicht mehr will. Und ich würde sagen, wir machen einfach das nächste Mal weiter. Und verabschiede mich damit und wünsche euch noch einen schönen Tag, Abend, Morgen, was auch immer gerade ist und sage auf Wiedersehen.